Endotracheal intubation is an important part of airway management. It is best learned through practice under expert supervision, in our opinion, first on a mannequin and then on elective, uncomplicated and fasted patients. This lesson aims to prepare you for these practice sessions and our narrow focus is teaching the manual skills that will increase your chances of success. Your intubation should always be preceded by an airway assessment. What equipment and personnel does the patient in front of you require? Are there complications you suspect may arise? And is everyone on board with the plan if they do? First, place the patient in an optimal position with the pillow tucked underneath the shoulders. Raise the head relative to the body into the so-called sniffing position. Your goal is to achieve a line of sight to the vocal cords in order to pass the tube through them into the trachea. This requires a laryngoscope. We will teach the traditional direct laryngoscopy, but for filming purposes we use a video laryngoscope that has the same shape. Have the patient inhale 100% oxygen through a tight-fitting mask. When the measured expiratory or end tidal oxygen concentration exceeds 80%, you've loaded up an oxygen reserve in the periphery of the lungs. If this monitoring is unavailable, pre-oxygenate for a minimum of 3 minutes. Pre-oxygenation can be further improved, especially in the obese, by tilting the table and by applying a positive end expiratory pressure. This extra oxygen in the patient buys you potentially life-saving time if you have unexpected airway difficulties. Precious time to call for help or try more advanced techniques. Administer the analgesic and await the onset. Laryngoscopy is very painful and requires drugs to alleviate sympathetic response and airway reflexes. Next, administer the hypnotic. The patient gradually loses consciousness, airway muscle tone and respiratory drive. From this point on, the patient's breathing is your responsibility. A paralytic facilitates intubation. Traditionally, we would first have confirmed successful face mask ventilation, but no evidence has shown that this prevents airway complications. Therefore, the emerging consensus is to administer it as soon as the patient is unconscious. Open the airways. A two-finger chin lift may be all it takes. If this isn't enough to be able to ventilate the patient, the next step is a jaw thrust. Open the patient's mouth with your thumbs on the patient's chin and place your fingers firmly behind the angle of the mandible and lift straight up in a decisive manner. Successful ventilation is confirmed by observing the chest wall rising and regular end tidal CO2 waves on the monitor. If you cannot ventilate the patient at this point, you need to use other equipment and techniques that we will demonstrate in forthcoming videos. While you wait full onset of the drugs, take a moment to make sure that you have achieved absolute optimal positioning before proceeding to laryngoscopy. Do not forget that while you may hold the blade, this is very much a team effort. Open the patient's mouth with your right hand and hold the laryngoscope in your left. Not too tight, with three or four fingers as close to the blade as possible for precision and control. Insert the blade in the right side of the mouth, carefully pushing the tongue aside. The aim is to create an unobstructed line of sight to the larynx by pushing the tongue to the left and lifting the epiglottis, exposing the vocal cords. This requires precision, not brute force. A common mistake at this point is leaning forward, as it feels this will give a better view. It doesn't. Stand upright, with the left arm at a 90 degree angle tucked in towards your body. This allows for better ergonomics, better communication with the team and a better overview of the ventilator, the timer and the patient. Let's see the laryngoscopy once again. 
Advance the blade until you see the epiglottis and place the tip in the vallecula, the recess at the base of the tongue. At this point, you can start to apply some force in the direction of the laryngoscope shaft. Sometimes a light external force on the larynx can make the vocal cords spring into view. Ask for your assistant's hand and move it to apply backwards, upwards, rightward pressure, or burp for short. Make sure you don't pinch the lips and do not exert any pressure on the front incisors. By now you hopefully have a clear view of the opening of the trachea, a dark slit between the pale vocal cords. Insert the tube carefully. Sometimes a gentle rotation is required to pass the vocal cords. Advance the tip until the cuff has disappeared and the vocal cords are between the two black lines. Ask for inflation of the cuff and carefully retract the laryngoscope. Hold the tube firmly while you confirm that it's lodged in the trachea and not the esophagus. The gold standard is return of end-tidal carbon dioxide over several respiratory cycles. Be very cautious when interpreting the other signs traditionally used. Auscultation finds on both lungs, condensation in the tube and the symmetric rise of the chest wall, as these may very well be positive despite an esophageal intubation. When you're absolutely certain that the tube is in the trachea, secure it with tape and initiate mechanical ventilation. Congratulations, you have now performed an endotracheal intubation. For more videos on anesthesia and critical care, go to interanus.org.